And it, there was always this question of, well, what are you doing on your day off? Why do you need a day off? I don't know. It's May and I don't want to be at school today. <laughs> Hello and welcome. My name is Kendra and I'm your Lieblings as Linderin, coming back to you with another video. Finally. So, today I wanted to talk to you guys about internships in Germany. So, as you know, I've been away for a little bit and one of the major things that I've been doing in the last few months is I have been completing a mandatory internship for my master's program. Some master's programs not all require you to complete a mandatory internship. And as a part of my internship, I had to do something related to economics because I study economics. So I want to give you guys a little bit more information about my experience and kind of give you some tips and tricks to help set you up so that you can also find an internship in Germany. Now, I'm no expert. This is my very first time landing an internship in Germany. I just want to give you guys some tips that I think helped me and some that I think might be beneficial to all of you. Let's get into the internship experience in Germany. But before we get started, make sure you click that like button and make sure you hit subscribe for more great content. How did I find my internship? I hate TikTok. I promise I'm going somewhere with this. I hate TikTok because for so long, I didn't want to download it because I thought uh, this is a Gen Z app. I don't want to use it. I don't want another social media app on my phone. Long story short, I ended up downloading it and I was scrolling through TikTok and I was following this creator. I think she's a British creator who lives in Germany. And she posted a TikTok with a bunch of different websites where you can find internships in Germany. And I actually ended up going to all of the different websites and they're just regular job search engines that are tailored to positions in Germany. So I went through all the different websites. I entered things related to my study field and I ended up finding my internship on one of those websites. So it was just a regular job search process, just like if you find jobs on Indeed. You find the job, you read the advertisement, you apply and so on and so forth. A big thing for me when I was applying for internships was that I wanted something or I preferred something where I didn't have to speak German. So if you've been watching for this channel, you know that I've been learning German for over eight years, but it's been on and off. And I wouldn't say that my German is anywhere near perfect. And of course I feel more comfortable speaking my native language, English. So I was exclusively looking for positions where I didn't have to speak German. Eventually I came across my position and it was perfect in every way, but on the advertisement, it said German and English. And I decided to apply for it anyway, because like I said, it was perfect. And I just thought, let's just go in there and see what happens. I'm gonna try my best. And I ended up getting the position. So I'm glad that I ultimately ended up putting myself out there because I was here thinking maybe, you know, I won't get the position because I'm not native, because I'm not fluent and I ended up getting it. And it has been a great couple of months and I really, really enjoy the company that I work for. Although I work remotely, there are some differences that I noticed between how working for a German company is and how it is to work for an American company. When I was working in the US, I was a teacher. So that's my main basis of comparison for what it's like to work full time in the US. And I also have some experiences that I've heard from friends. But one of the biggest differences I noticed, which is not surprising at all, is the culture around vacation days and taking days off. When I was teaching in the US, we had two paid time off days per year. And then we also, because we were teachers, we had summers off, um, spring break, winter break, all kinds of different federal holidays. So we had a lot of days off. But outside of those set breaks, you had two days of PTO and then you had unlimited sick days. But after a certain amount of days, you had to get a note from the doctor or something like that. But it wasn't really encouraged to take extra vacation days. And if you did take days off, it was kind of like this culture of um, shaming you. So I got shamed by people that I worked for and people that I worked with. Uh, and it, there was always this question of, well, what are you doing on your day off? Why do you need a day off? I don't know. It's May and I don't want to be at school today. <laughs> but in Germany, it's so much more different. And I realized when it came time for me to take my days off, I felt bad about it. Like I, I really felt bad about taking days off. And I took days off because I wanted to do school related things. But I still felt so guilty for not coming into work. And I realized that that's my American mindset where we have this culture of shaming people for taking days off. And, you know, I think that's gotten a lot better in the last two years 
because, you know, when you're sick, people tell you to take a day off. If your mental health is not up to par, people tell you to take a day off. And I do notice more companies in the U.S. are trying to take strides toward showing more compassion and understanding for people with mental health problems. But I just think that it's a lot more deeply ingrained into the work culture here where people are like, yeah, obviously you should take a day off. Obviously you should leave work early if you're not feeling well and it's not going to be counted against you. Another thing I really like about working in Germany is that you're encouraged to be curious and ask questions. Whereas when I was teaching in the U.S., I wasn't really encouraged to ask questions. It was a very fast paced work environment and I was kind of treated like um, I was stupid if I didn't know the answer right away or if I needed clarification on something. Yeah, this might just be something that's specific to the company that I work for. I love my company so much, but I never had that feeling of I can't ask a question because I feel stupid. And I love that because when you're young and you're starting your career and even starting your career in another country, you never want to feel like there's any stupid questions. You know, you want to ask and be as curious as possible. And that's something that I really, really have loved about my experience so far. And the last thing I can say about my experience is that I feel like my input is really valued, even as an intern. So I did a few internships when I was in the U.S. and the dynamic between myself and my boss was never really very hierarchical at these internships, but it definitely was a lot more like, you have this task, you have to do it at this time, and that's just how it is. Whereas here, I feel like I have a lot more autonomy to say, well, this is possible, this is not possible, I need a little more time for this. XYZ and there's not as much pressure to perform 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 right away You just feel like you're valued as a person rather than just another warm body So the first tip that I would give to a student who's looking for an internship or a work student position in Germany is Use the German style of CV. So I'll include a link below showing you what the German style CV looks like but it's very important that you use the German style CV when you're applying for a job here. Now there are some agencies and there might even be some services on your campus where you can submit your CV and have someone look over it and tell you how to tailor it better toward German companies. But yes, it's super important that you format your CV to look like a German CV or your application is probably going to get passed right over. My next few tips are gonna be like a little bit of a rant about German in the workplace because I feel really strongly about this. A lot of people say you can move to Germany without learning German, you can work in Germany without learning German, and that is true, but I would never advocate for somebody moving here without learning German. Things in your day-to-day -day life alone are so much easier when you speak German, and you can really see that difference in people who speak the language and people who don't speak the language. So yes, it is possible to live here and work here without knowing the language, but the job market that's available to people who speak German versus people who don't speak German are so completely different. And I see those differences because I speak German, I have friends who speak German, and I see the differences in the opportunities that are available to us versus the opportunities that are available to my friends who don't speak German. So it can open so many more doors for you if you just take the time to learn the language. Your German doesn't have to be perfect but you do need to make the effort and try to learn the language and that'll give you so many more different networking opportunities, so many different opportunities for development. And I would highly, highly advocate for learning the language or finding a position where your company will maybe pay for you to take classes. And you can even ask before your interview, will the interview be conducted in German and English? That's a tip that a friend gave me before I had my interview. And I was told that I could speak English if I needed to. So my first interview was in English and my second interview was in German. And I felt so much more comfortable doing that first interview in English because I could really express myself and my intentions and my background, my experiences and why I was interested in the role so much better in English. By the time I had my second interview, I already knew a lot about the company culture, my daily tasks in my position, and I felt a lot more comfortable having the second interview in German, having already had the first interview in English. And don't be afraid to use a little workplace denglish. I made a video last year actually about the English loan words that you hear in German and you hear them so much on the workplace, especially if you work with, like I work with a lot of millennials and we just use English words in the middle of German sentences all the time to the point where I just started using English words whenever I don't remember the German word and I don't even hesitate for a second to just 
throw an English word out there because everybody knows what you mean and you know it's not going to really interrupt the flow if you just kind of throw an English word in there. So yeah, those are my experiences so far working in Germany and I hope those tips were helpful. If you do have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below or you can send me a DM on Instagram. Also, let me know what other kinds of content you guys want to see. Um, now that I'm back on YouTube, I really want to make more content oriented towards student life. Um, I had a request to make a video about applying to grad school in Germany, so I will make a video like that coming soon. I do have some travel vlogs coming up because I'm going everywhere this summer and I also had done some travel a few months ago that I filmed and never got the chance to post. So there's going to be a whole lot of different things coming. So let me know what you guys want to see. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in my next video. Auf Wiedersehen.